At first, it took the form of a sphere that could imitate anything that existed. Sometime after being dropped onto the earth, it assumed the form of a rock and once temperatures began to rise, it copied the appearance of moss. Before long, as snow began to fall, a single wolf came ambling from the south, and, once it collapsed, it took the form of that creature. Having gained a consciousness it, now in the form of a wolf, continued walking and carving into its mind new sensations. After walking for an unknown amount of time, the wolf comes across a boy. The nameless boy, calling the wolf Joan, is very excited to see it and is very happy it didn't forget about him. Noticing that Joan isn't acting normal, the boy carries it into the house where he tries to give it food, but to no avail. Once inside, Joan takes in the atmosphere of the house, observing the sounds, the smell, and the warmth. If it could speak, it would probably say I want to stay here forever. The next morning, the boy and the wolf go out to gather wood. Besides the boy, there are no people to be found and the only thing outside is houses that have long since fallen into ruin. Before opening the door, he silently hopes and pleads that the noise he hears is from one of the villagers. However, he soon finds out that the noise was actually the result of a fish on the end of the fishing line attached to his home. Noticing that Joan is refusing to eat for the third time, the boy wonders if the wolf has forgotten how. He shows it how to eat and the wolf immediately mimics the boy's actions. The nameless boy draws his friend's faces. Later that night, the boy draws pictures of the other villagers on the wall. He explains to Joan that he is doing this so he doesn't forget about the people that lived there. He then tells Joan that he is thinking of leaving because he wants to see the world and experience new things. The boy spends all of the next days preparing for the journey and, once he is finally done, they head south. After hours of walking, they come across a marker that tells them to continue heading forward and they decide to rest for the night. While eating dinner, the boy says he can't wait to eat something else besides fish and that he would love to try eating things like fruits and vegetables. After about five days, the boy finds a bush that he says proves they are getting closer to the mountains, and, just as they are about to continue, the boy slips and falls into the water, injuring his left leg. They decide to stop for the day so the boy can tend to his injury. He tries to reassure himself that it is just a flesh wound and that he can keep going. As the days pass, it is obvious the boy is losing strength, as he cannot continue walking for long periods of time, and his injury is starting to swell. He continues to try and convince himself that turning back now would be foolish and that surely they don't have much farther to go. Just as he says this, the boy spots a marker with a crossed out arrow, telling them that going forward will not lead to paradise. To the left, the boy sees broken down wagons and multiple headstones. The boy, trying to remain optimistic, tells Joan that everyone got this far, which means paradise can't be far away now. Breaking down into tears, the boy asks Joan if they can make it to the mountains but, when the wolf doesn't respond, he becomes frustrated wondering why it doesn't answer him. He continues crying even harder, knowing that Joan can't respond and that he has been talking to himself the whole time. He apologizes and decides that going home would be the best thing to do. Once home, the boy cries himself to sleep and awakes the next morning with a fever. He makes Joan food and checks on his wound, which is now infected. He tells himself that his wound is healing and that once it heals, they will try to find the mountains again. However, the boy's fever is even worse the next day and he has no strength to get out of bed. Later that night, he struggles to get to his chair, saying if I'm sleeping when they all come back, that would be embarrassing. He asks Joan to never forget about him and quietly lays back in his chair. 
The next scene with the boy shows him meeting up with all of the other villagers and traveling to find the mountains. They eventually reach their paradise where they find other people. After an unknown amount of time, the boy's body falls to the ground. The wolf tries to get him to move but is unsuccessful. It grabs a hold of the boy's coat and immediately begins taking on the form of the boy. It leaves in search of an even stronger impetus and will no doubt fulfill the boy's wish of exploring the world.